Hi, David Knapp here, Ethnos 360. I work with the Stewardship and Development Office. I'm currently recording this in Arizona. We are still in Arizona under the stay at home watch requirement. And I'm picking up from pe people that I'm talking to or communicating with, even here in other parts of the country, uh, some of the trends. And one of those trends is people are feeling lonely. Now, loneliness will overcome somebody depending on a number of things. One is your personality type. Another one is your situation, uh, your background, and so forth, your health. But uh, loneliness is something of concern. And I would throw out a challenge today for us to turn our loneliness into godliness, uh, right where you are. Now, I remember when we were helping our youngest son, Aaron, who, by the way, is at the MTC in Missouri on staff today, deal with the idea that he was going to go to kindergarten the, the next week all day. And so we were trying to help him get used to the idea mentally, emotionally, and whatever. And we were living at, at, there at the Bible school outside the back door in the house where Dan and Cassie Falls are currently living. We were, my wife was walking across from there to the main building to come to lunch. And she was talking to Aaron and basically saying, Aaron, guess tomorrow, I mean next week, you're going to be in kindergarten. There was a pause. He suddenly burst into tears. Yeah, but mom, that means you're going to be all alone. Now, as tender as a moment that might be, uh, it is an issue oftentimes that is a difficult thing for many people. I recall after my wife died, the overwhelming, stifling loneliness that crept into my life. After all the hurt and the pain and, and in fact all the friends went away, I found myself experiencing a loneliness like I had never experienced before. So I asked the Lord for something for my spirit to help me with that. I soon began to realize that the time after Jesus was crucified and died, the disciples were, yeah, they were hiding out because of their fear of their life, but I also began to realize, wait a minute, they were, it wasn't just Peter who was crying, they were all grieving, loneliness, and I thought, you know, I wonder, the Lord probably prepared them or tried to prepare them on how to cope with that because he knew that was coming. So I went back and started doing some reading of the messages and the, the things that Jesus taught on the days before his crucifixion. And of course, part of that is recorded in the Upper Room Discourse. And I found myself reading in John chapter 16, uh, 13 through John chapter 16 and in that vicinity, and I began to find, wow, there's lots of places that Jesus told them He's leaving. And so from John chapter 13 and verse 33 through John chapter 16 and verse 33, I found 11 in instances where Jesus either said he's leaving or inferred that he was leaving because he's going to come back. 11 times. And spackled throughout that, he gave bullet points, action steps, subject matters, things to, do, to keep in mind in their dealing with the fact he's leaving. They're going to be alone without him now physically. So I went back with my pen and I started underlining action points, things that Jesus said to do or remember or embrace that help them understand what, how to deal with their grieving and their loss, and their loneliness, turning their loneliness into godliness. I found 15 things. 15 things, subject matters, 15 action points, 15 uh, ideas or things to keep in mind to help them deal with their loneliness. Now, of course, in this short uh, time I, I'm just talking here, I don't have time to explain all of them, and I think I won't do that. I'm going to give 
an assignment. Now you might expect that from me, right? Giving you an assignment. Go back yourself. Begin in chapter 6, 13, verse 6, 33, go through 16, 33, and find all 15 of the subject matters or action points Jesus gave to help them turn their loneliness into godliness. Now I'll give you a hint. I'll give you the first one and the last one. The first one is found, of course, in verse 34 of chapter 13, and he basically says there, love one another. Interesting, the first thing he tells them on dealing with, I'm going to be gone, is their relationship with each other. Love one another. And of course, God's love is to be reflected. 1 John chapter 4 uh, talks about that one. The, the last one, number 15, is in chapter 15. And that's the vine, being uh, abiding in the vine. And among other things, it's basically refer referring to your or my relationship with God, with Christ. 1 John chapter 1, verses 4 through 10. Abide in the vine. So both the first one and the last one, he says, maintain the relationships. Now, oftentimes when we're lonely, we think we're just kind of pulling in and feeling sorry for ourselves. But no, he says, keep these relationships alive. Now, the fact that you have to watch the the the, um, the the tour of the of the school and all this is a, a loss, and you might feel lonely out there and not having had been able to get back together. But my challenge is, take my take my offer here. Go through and study those things. Now, if you go through that and actually do study them, I and you don't find all 15. You can contact me, I'll help you locate them, and we'll go from there. But for those half a dozen people watching this that might actually take me up on that, when you come back with the list of 15 things on how to turn loneliness into godliness, your conclusion probably will be, but Dave, those are just basic things that we were taught in Bible school. And my response is, exactly. That's my point. May you be blessed by the Lord himself. May his word be real. Thank you very much. God bless.